In this lesson, we're going to discuss the Modify Tools. I've loaded this file here, which has some entities on it we're going to use. So we'll go down here and we'll click on the Modification Tools toolbar icon. And we're going to select an item. Let's say we're going to select this circle right here. What we're going to do is come up here and move it. So when we, when we click the Move button, Notice down there the mouse says select a reference point. Remember the five reference points on the circle? Let's just use the center reference point. So that's our reference point. Now it says a target point. That's where you're going to move it to. Let's just snap the end of lines and move the center of the circle to here. All right. So that's the target. And once we've done that, housekeeping, now it's going to say, OK, what do you want to do? Delete the original, which means just move it, or do you want to move it and keep the original or you might want to make multiple copies. Let's do multiple copies for a second, multiple copies to see what happens. So notice it made multiple copies and the distance from the center of this circle to the center of that circle is the same as the distance from the center of this circle to the center of the next circle. So when it copies something, it uses the same offset value for every replication. So now we have three circles that were drawn from the one. So I'm going to delete these two. and move on to the next topic. Let's select this small line. Come up here and say we're going to center point and rotate this object. So first got to find the center point you want to use. And it's on a grid, so I'm going to say the end of the line. So I know I'm at the end of the line. So that's the center point. Notice now we get the same choices, delete, keep original, multiple copies and we get to set an angle. So we'll leave it at 45 degrees right now. So if you look at that line that's at this direction, 45 should put it over here. So we click OK and sure enough it rotated 45, I, I was going 90, 45 degrees counterclockwise. So that's how you rotate something. So let's just undo that, put it back where it was. And move on to the next, the next topic. Okay, next we're going to scale something. We're going to select this circle as our entity. We're going to come up here and this choice right here says scale. So when we click that, it says a focus point on the entity. So we're going to pick this focus point right here. The scale is going to be compressed towards this point if it's smaller, away from this point if it gets bigger. So I'm going to click on the focus point, And now you notice it says keep the original scale factor 0.9. So we'll just leave that scale factor 0.9. Watch the circle. It will get smaller by 90% when I click OK. And if you notice, this all got smaller going that direction towards our reference point. So that's how you scale an entity. I'm going to undo that. We'll move on to the next topic. Next, we're going to use the mirror tool. So we're going to do a mouse selection of this weird shape. Come over here and we'll select the mirror tool. It says first point of symmetry axis. We're going to draw an axis. I'm going to snap the grids. Make sure I, I got a vertical line here. And the other point. And we'll keep the we'll delete the original. So what I did, I flipped this 180 degrees. That's what you're typically used to seeing when you do a mirror function. This mirror function has a little more oomph behind it. If we undo that, go back to our selecting the same object, come over here and select our mirror function. This time we're going to mirror it at an angle. For example, we can we can do this. We can notice how we change the angle. It's still being mirrored, but it's being distorted while it's mirrored. It's the angle's being distorted. So it mirrored over here but it also twisted up. Now instead of just using a free line, freehand, let's undo that. Let's reselect it again. If you want to get some precision in this, we select the mirror function. We could place a line right here. Notice the XY coordinates, 12, 7. Wherever I was. <laughs> All right, let's use the uh, command line, spacebar. 
So we're going to say 12, comma, 8. Then we want the other one to be, let's see, up here at this angle, which is around 17, comma, 18. So I hit enter. 17, comma, 18. So if you knew the coordinates or you knew some points or something you wanted to snap to, you could set this line at a very specific angle. And now it's going to delete the original. And now, in addition to mirroring it from left to right, I also rotated it a very, the, the mirror function occurred across a very specific axis here. So this has a lot of potential once you learn how to use it. Normally in a drawing, the axis references will be some other entities on the drawing. So you could snap to like the end of a line, that's one end of the axis. Maybe the center of a circle is the other end of the axis. And that would give you an axis rotation point for this mirroring function, which isn't 180 degrees. Okay, for the next topic, we're going to select this complex object again. We're going to go up here and we're going to modify it. We're going to move it and rotate it at the same time. So we select that tool. It says, what's the reference point? I'll make this upper corner my reference point, target point. Notice I can move it. Target point's going to be, let's see, the end of this line up here. So we'll change our snap tool. The end of that line. So now you notice it says we can put it in rotation now. We can rotate it if we want to. An additional minus 30 degrees. Delete the original and say OK. So now it's been rotated 30 degrees. It's been moved from here up to here and rotated 30 degrees. So that's how that tool is used. Let me undo that. The next tool we're going to discuss is a Rotate 2 TWO tool. T-O-O-L. So we're going to select this triangle first of all. It's a normal box selection with the mouse. We're going to select this tool right here. Rotate to tool. First thing to ask for is the center of the primary rotation. We're going to have this, this thing rotate around this circle. So the center of our primary rotation would be the center of this circle. So that's going to be my center of primary rotation. And that's for the center of secondary rotation. If we wanted this triangle to rotate while it went around the circle, we'd have a, a point of second. Notice how, how it looks. If I put it up here, they're all pointed the same direction though. Do you notice that? No matter what I do, they're all pointed the same direction, and I don't want that. So how I can fix that, I'm going to make a center rotation right here. If you realize that 360 degrees comprises a circle, then 30 into 360 is 12. So what I want is 11 copies. To have them evenly distributed around the circle. I'm going to make it 11. Now I'm going to make this angle no angle because I don't want the things, I don't want these things all point the same direction. I want them all point to the center of the circle. So this angle B, every time angle A moves, angle B moves that much the other way. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to put this thing work with the zero value here and we'll see what happens. Notice I click away now. I've got my 12 triangles, 30 degree increments all the way around the circle and they're all pointing inside the circle. And that's how you use the uh, Rotate 2 tool. Let's delete that. Next we're going to use this Trim tool. We're going to do something that you're not expecting, probably. Choose the limiting entity. We're going to make this arc the limiting entity. Choose the entity to trim. We're going to trim this item here. Notice when I do that, it trims it right to the contact point on that arc. So let's trim again. Let's say, no, I don't want to do that. I want to trim to the middle arc. So limiting the entity is right there. And the entity to trim is right there. So notice it's really easy to have these limiting entities change on the same source. And that's what the trim tool does. It changes the length of an entity by some limiting entity. In this case, it was an arc, the middle arc. 
The next tool we want to use is called the Trim Both. Here we have two lines. Let's say that these lines don't actually intersect, right? But what I can do, I can choose a limiting entity. This line will limit how far the other entity goes. Entity goes. Notice now they're connected. So this entity was stretched to, to the limit point defined by the other entity. So undo that. See that again. If we reverse it, then this entity would be the limiting entity, and this entity would stretch to match it. It would have the same results because they both intersect at the same point. So that's a way to comp connect lines that aren't connected. Next we'll use the lengthen and shorten tool. When you select this tool, notice we have the amount we want to lengthen or shorten. And this can be a, a formula. It doesn't have to just be a number. It could be like dimension 3 times dimension 2, which would be 6, right? So change it by 6. So it says choose the line or the arc. And I'm going to choose this line extended it that way by 6. That's because I'm at this end of the line. If I go to the other end of the line, it'll extend it the other way by 6 units. Same with an arc. If I select an arc, it extend the arc six units on that end of the arc or on this end of the arc, any one of these guys. So all, all it does is extends whatever you, entity you select, line or arc, and you select the amount that it extends it, and which part of it you get closest to is the part that it extends. So that's all I have to say about that. The next tool I want to use is the stretch tool. Notice it says, what's the first corner? So I'm going to stretch this weird shape here. I'm going to stretch it right here. So the first corner is going to be right here. Second corner is going to be right there. Now the reference point will be here. The target point is where I want to go next. Okay, I made a major blunder here. What my blunder is this. Uh, I better put it on a grid or it's going to change the shape of it. So I'm going to snap to a grid when I place this. Let's back up one more level. This, the selection box doesn't matter, but when I do the reference point, I want it to be on a grid or along some line or something so that when I do the target point, everything will go with me and it'll be these lines will stay straight. Otherwise, it go, you saw how they saw how they go jagged if you're not paying attention. So I use some kind of a snap function to extend something. That's how you extend that box. We could also extend it over here. Once again, choose entity to trim. Oops, change functions on me. Go back to extension again, first corner. Second corner, I screwed up. First corner, second corner, reference point. We can make the reference point just line down here, okay? Let's do that. Now I can extend it along this line. So it's, a, it's like an offset of the actual item. So I've extended that thing. Let's go ahead and undo the extension. So that's how the extension tool works. Right here. Stretch, I should say. Stretch tool. Okay, next we're going to select this unusual object here. And we're going to come over here and we're going to select the clip to rectangle tool. So I click on that, it says first corner of the rectangle. So we'll make the first corner right there. Second corner of the rectangle is right there. And notice what I did, it clipped everything except what was within the rectangle. So that's not what I really intended to do. So we're going to undo that and try again. First corner. Be down here. And notice now it removes the things that were not selected within the box. For another example of using this tool, we're going to select the multiple arcs. Shift the next one, shift the third one. And then we're going to come over here and select the tool. 
and we're going to snap to this line for the first corner of our selection box. And we'll snap down here someplace and pass the arcs for our second corner. What that will do, that will trim the arcs so that you can see we now have the arcs all stopping. I could extend this line if I wanted to or shorten it. But the arcs are all stopping at the same intersection point of the line or if the line were to extend. So that's how I use a that's how I use this command, which won't work to select something. Clip to rectangle. We can also use it on a circle to make an arc out of a circle. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to come over here and select first corner. First corner is there. Second corner is going to be down here. And now that circle has been turned into an arc. So there's lots of versatility in these tools. This concludes our introduction to the modified tools and the advanced presentation of the rest of the modified tools will be conducted in a different lesson.